Hello, welcome to Making Better Bites. It's your host, Adrienne, and I'm so glad um, to have you here for another episode and to be back to share some more information with you. Um, if you've watched the podcast before, um, this is not our typical setup. While it is very beautiful and I love it so much, um, yeah, I'm just trying to get the internet repaired still. I've talked about it many times, the saga of the internet connection dropping me, and um, it's still not working, but I should have it back to back and working next week, hopefully. But for now, I have found this nice little setup and um, have podcast equipment uh, will travel. So I've moved myself around. Hopefully the audio quality is okay. That's kind of my biggest concern because the visual is great, but I know most of you listen um, via podcast and even on YouTube, of course, I want my um, my audio quality to be okay. So I'm in an open space right now. Usually the closet has much better soundproofing, but I think it should be fine. Um, and yeah, I don't want to give it too much attention. So moving forward now, and I won't talk about it again. Fingers crossed that we'll be good next week and not have to worry. Um, it's also storming outside, so the wind is very aggressive, but I assume you guys cannot hear that. So again, moving on. Um, so today we're going to be talking about setting yourself up for success. So I wanted to talk about this because I have had people reach out to me and ask about like, well, where do I begin with starting my hormones? Where do I begin with starting my health journey? How do I know if I need help? How do I know like how to do that? Right. And so then I was thinking about myself and kind of how I finally came to a point um, that I could develop new habits and kind of self-reflect and then put into action like new things that I wanted to do in my life. Um, and so I kind of thought about like how have I done that and then how can I break it down to help people, other people do that? Uh, because I think that social media is great and has connected us to lots of people and lots of resources that we didn't have before. Um, but now, it's like, okay, there's all of this information out there. What do we do with it and how do we use it? And so um, while I want to give you the education and the information on your hormones and your nutrition, um, I'm not there to counsel you individually. So I also need to give you kind of some tools on how you can use the information um, in your life as well. So I was kind of kicking myself last week that I didn't talk about this in the episode that I never brought it up. And then I was like, well, that's okay because you can literally just make a whole episode about it and that's fine. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode, you don't need to listen to them like in order by any means, but I would highly recommend checking it out after you hear this one would be great. Before I get started on um, the non-introduction stuff, I do want to go ahead and throw out there that um, this is not intended to be any kind of medical advice for you and um, to always work with your trusted healthcare professionals because they know your medical history and your health history and so they will be able to steer you more individually if you have any health or medical concerns. So um, we'll go ahead and get started in the first thing that I wanted to talk about today, which is kind of like how difficult it is in the beginning when you're trying to form a new habit and um, how I totally, totally get that because I think a lot of people's history with trying to get healthier is a diet or an exercise plan that they've purchased or been told about um, or found on Pinterest or whatever the case may be. So that's like a lot of people's history when it comes to making changes, right? But with this, we want to have like a different mindset and a different, um, a different focus on uh, when we are making these changes because these are little things that we want to do for a lifetime and setting ourselves up for success rather than just doing it for um, reaching one individual goal, like maybe you wanna lose 30 pounds and then that's your individual goal that you're trying to reach. So it's not like your lifelong projection is your focus. Um, so what we wanna do here is take our focus and make it like what we are going to do for the unforeseen future, till the unforeseen future. Um, of course, things can change and you will mold and develop and grow as a person along the way. But right now we're just at the very beginning, square one. So what are we going to do? Because it's really, really difficult to get started. Right. And so um, basically, it's OK that it's hard. It's OK and normal that it's going to be difficult for you in the beginning, because 
that's just how it goes. I mean, habits are hard to break. It's not simple and it's totally normal. So I think when people think of making habit changes and we talk about, oh, they're like just little small things that you're going to be doing different, then it should be easy and you kind of beat yourself up for it not being easy for you. But that's not the case at all. It's not going to be necessarily easy just because it's small. Um, And so keep that in mind and be patient with yourself. So this isn't like a diet. I feel like a lot of people's approach, we're always talking about like falling off the train or, oh my gosh, this is something I hear a lot. I fell off the train this weekend. I have to get back on on Monday. And so with habit development and that kind of mindset, we are not looking at like being on the train or being off the train. It's like you're just doing your best at any given moment. And that's not always going to be perfect because and it's okay to not be perfect. You don't need to be perfect by any means. There is no award when you get to the end of it of like you did this habit, you made this change and development perfectly, right? Because we are human. This is life. It's never going to be perfect. There's always difficult things that are going on and that are going to get in your way or shift or change um, your perspective or your time availability, just tons of different things going on. And so um, you're never going to be able to be perfect because you're always changing and things are always different. And that's okay. Like I said, that's perfectly normal, totally fine, and don't stress. Um, And don't beat yourself up about it. Just do your best at the next given moment. Um, And that's all you can ask for yourself because it's going to take a lot of focus in the beginning for it to then become second nature. So um, for myself, making a plan and writing things down um, always helps me to be able to remain focused and having written down like why it is I am doing what I'm doing. So like if it comes to like a nutrition change and there's like a food that I or a nutrient that I want to start incorporating, having it set up like when I go to the grocery that week, sitting down and writing out, you know, when am I going to eat this because I'm going to purchase it and I need a way that I know I'm going to incorporate this into my life because it's not going to be easy and I'm going to have to remind myself to keep doing it um, until it becomes something that just naturally happens. So for me, this was um, with my leafy greens. I just had to start knowing like, okay, I'm going to buy this container of spinach. It's going to be in my refrigerator and I am going to eat it with my breakfast. And the way I'm going to eat that with my breakfast is that I am, you know, anytime I pretty much always pair it with my eggs. I eat eggs most days. And especially in the beginning, this is kind of how I got started with it. And like I said, I knew I wanted to incorporate the leafy greens. And so the way I knew I was going to stick to it so that I didn't forget is to eat it with my breakfast. So every morning when I went into the kitchen, I got out my eggs and I got out my spinach and then I got out anything else that I was doing with it. So whether it was avocado toast and I was like sauteing some spinach and topping it with a boiled egg or if I was um, doing raw spinach a handful in my smoothie or if I was going to um, make a scramble or an omelet with the eggs just making sure I got it out every morning when I was having the eggs getting it out of the fridge along with my breakfast ingredients that way I wouldn't forget so that was my plan on how I was going to initially begin eating more leafy greens so now I just know that I'm eating leafy greens and it's become much more second nature. I don't have to work so hard to incorporate it into my diet because I've found lots of ways that I enjoy it at breakfast, at lunch, and at dinner. Um, And it happens pretty naturally. But in the beginning, I definitely had to like keep reminding myself that this is something that I'm doing and this is how I'm going to make it happen for myself. Um, And I still do that even now. Like I sit down and I write out – when I write out my menu I for the week, like I always was really good about writing out dinners and what I was going to eat for dinner because that's how I grew up seeing my mom make our grocery list. She always like wrote down like what our dinner was going to be for every night of the week. Not that it had to be served that night if it didn't end up working for that night or we didn't want it, but just knowing that you had something for each night that you were going to be home and eating dinner at home. Um, so... I was always really good at the dinner portion. I even did this like in college, in high school, when I helped out with like grocery shopping and cooking for my family. Um, I've always done it, but it was a lot harder for me. I was always getting stuck on like breakfasts and lunches. And um, now I have a planner that I can put on my fridge that my mother-in-law gave me actually. 
um, that I have decided to use, and I give myself at least two breakfasts, two to three lunches, and then I plan out all of the different dinners. So um, that way I know what I'm going to be eating for the week, even when it comes to breakfast and lunch, so that I can, for one, buy the ingredients, and for two, when it comes time that I'm like getting hungry and I'm going to eat those meals, I know what I'm going to be doing. And was that just two points? So the third, the third point would be like also so that I can make sure that I am incorporating, like I said, those foods or those nutrients or whatever my focus, my new focus might be, um, making sure I'm incorporating those things. Or even my old focuses, like like the leafy greens, I still go ahead and write down like, um, you know, I'm going to have a chopped salad for lunch, like this at least twice. And so I know that I'm going to be incorporating the greens there. Um, or like, what's another one that I have? Oh, seafood. Um, I, want, I like to eat like tuna or salmon or sometimes shrimp as well um, for or sardines, mackerel, those kind of like canned. Well, I do the tuna, sardines and mackerel are canned. Shrimp, I do frozen and then salmon. I buy fresh and then I bake it or do it on the pan. But I like to have some form of one of those things at least twice a week. So I make sure that I always plan a lunch, at least one of my lunches to be like a seafood lunch. So um, using one of those things to incorporate, to make sure I'm consistently incorporating it because my husband doesn't love any of those kind of, love those foods as much. He doesn't want to eat them as regularly. And since we typically eat dinner together, we don't eat lunch together or breakfast, but um, we typically eat dinner together or at least we eat the same food for dinner. <laughs> um, and so I don't use them as much in our dinners. Like I would say like every other week we have one dinner that has like seafood, but it's almost never salmon because he does not like salmon. But I'll do like a tuna noodle bake or a um, like a shrimp pasta or shrimp tacos um, he'll eat too. So those are some other ways, like maybe once, like once a week, once every other week, kind of throw in a seafood for him as well because he needs to eat those foods um, too for his health, but he doesn't like them as much. So I, I find them to be good, and so I incorporate them at my lunches. So that's kind of that. But again, like I had to set up kind of like not a rule for myself, but kind of a rule or a guideline of how I was going to initiate like eating these foods. And it took a lot more effort and I had to think about it really hard to remember to do it. And then um, now it's just like second nature. Like I said, I pick one lunch usually at least that has has that in it. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't come naturally to me either. And it never has. And so those are that's just kind of like one way that. I do, like I just want you to know that it's okay if it's hard and it's it's normal if it takes a lot of focus and if you forget to do it for a week or two and it comes back to mind you remind yourself or you come across something that I say or something you see at the grocery store and you're like oh my gosh I totally forgot I was working on that just start it start it right there start it again um the best you can so not a big deal just keep working just keep working on it and I promise eventually it'll become second nature for you, even if it takes a few months, because some of them definitely take a little bit of time. Um, second point I wanted to talk about was that it won't, let's see, what I wrote down was it won't always be something orderly that's going to make it happen. So do things for your future self. So what I was thinking about there is like, if you get stuck in the rules and how things should go and how things have to go, then it's going to seem a lot more difficult to incorporate some of these habits or like some changes that you want to make. So for instance, if I talk about how you should be eating breakfast and it's really important to eat before you have any caffeine, starting your body with energy first thing in the morning because you've been fasted through your sleep, all of these things. But you don't like eggs. You don't like breakfast food. You don't like pancakes. You don't like whatever, whatever it is breakfast food, you're not a fan. So then you feel like there's a huge barrier for you um, in needing to eat breakfast because you don't like breakfast food. But that is just a social construct idea and it's okay to do things out of order. So you don't have to eat breakfast food in order to be eating quote unquote breakfast, especially not like American breakfast food. Like if you don't like cereal, if you don't like eggs, if you like all of these things, it's totally fine. You can, you can eat literally anything that you want. 
that is the beauty of adulthood. That it, well, we should be allowing our children to do the same if they don't like breakfast food, of course. But like if you were not allowed and you were made to feel like you could only eat these certain foods um, in the morning first thing, like I am giving you permission to not. My husband is not much of a breakfast food eater and, um, you know, he'll have like a bean burrito or a turkey sandwich and that's perfectly fine. Like it doesn't matter. Um, I even do the same thing, not regularly because as I've shared, obviously I like eggs. I like to eat them in the morning. I think they taste great. They make me happy. Um, sometimes I eat them more than once in a day, but, um, sometimes you wake up and you're just not feeling it. You really don't want to have those breakfast foods. Or for me, I wake up not feeling it. So I will make myself literally anything like, well, I shared recently that I did like crackers with cream cheese and smoked salmon and I put some veggies on top. That was delicious. And for some, that's not like viewed as like a traditional breakfast food. Of course, like salmon and, or lox on a bagel is like pretty traditional, but like crackers, not necessarily, or even like the salmon and lox or <laughs> lox and bagel isn't even normal for a lot of people, but it's totally fine because it's nourishing and it's something that sounded great to me and it doesn't matter what time of day it is. Like you can, you can eat it. It doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, it doesn't have to follow a specific order in order to make it happen. Myself, um, another thing that I do is that made me think of this topic was that I, this works because I work from home and I work for myself. So I have a pretty flexible schedule. Um, but I know a lot of other people also work from home, especially now um, in recent years. Or if you're a stay at home mom, this also could apply to you depending on what your schedule looks like. But I, if I know that I want to eat like rotisserie chicken or something for like lunch the next coming days like I will throw turn on the oven and throw in a uh, a frozen like chicken or like thaw out a chicken overnight and put it in the put it in the oven at like 10 o'clock in the morning or like 9 30 in the morning when I start working um or like in the middle of working I'll just get up and go do that if I want to eat it for lunch that day because like it's okay if you're cooking chicken in the middle of the day or like it's okay if you are prepping for dinner at 10 a.m. and putting it in the refrigerator to heat up and serve to your family at 5 or 6 p.m. If that's the time that you have and that's how you're going to make it work for you, by all means, please do it. So like you might think it's like weird to be doing things when it's not like the typical order, like you're not cooking your dinner at 4 or whatever but it's totally fine to do them in an abnormal like time period. So like if you have a hard time packing your lunch in the morning and getting up and having having to do that and making sure that you're up on time, like pack your lunch the day before, get it all in the Tupperwares, have your lunchbox sitting out and then just all you have to do in the morning is put it in the lunchbox and head out the door. So like you don't have to do everything in the exact order that people think it has to be done in, which I think maybe feels like it should be obvious. Like you can do these things whenever you want. But if I were to tell someone like, yeah, sometimes at like 930, I realize like I want to have um, roasted chicken for lunch or like, you know, pulled chicken um, on a salad or make a chicken salad or whatever. It's like, yeah, I'll, th I'll just throw it in the oven. It's not a big deal. Um like I said, it works for my schedule because I'm at home anyways, and so I can take the five minutes to do that, but um, I also kind of, I know I take things further than people have to because part of the reason that I cook, I cook the chicken at home and instead of buying a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store is because I like to buy my meat locally um, from a farmer, and so I buy it in bulk so I know that it's 100% organic, pasture raised, all of the thing, all of those kind of things, um, and gr uh, grown. <laughs> I don't know if you say grown locally for a chicken, farmed locally. Um, those things are important to me, and the nutrient makeup of the chicken can be slightly different with the amount of like omega three fatty acids and things like that. So, but like that's the ex extreme version of make having a chicken available. So of course, if you want to have rotisserie chicken you can get one at the grocery store and um, just have it ready to go for yourself at home. That's not a problem either. Totally fine. And that's still planning and preparing for yourself. I still do that. It's not like I'm like anti-rotisserie chicken from the grocery. I will still do it on occasion if I am in a pinch. But 
I like to make it at home. I like to have it myself and I like to know where it's coming from and know the farm that it's coming from. So I take it that extra step. So I guess that's also partially why people would think I'm weird for cooking a whole chicken maybe during the day. But it, whatever. A tip, though, for rotisserie chicken is um, when you do buy it at the grocery store is to get them warm and then go ahead and take it off the bone when you get home while it's still warm because it does come apart so much easier than when you wait and let it go into the refrigerator and then try to pull it later. So more tips just for setting yourself up for success, even if you're not cooking it yourself. Having it available, great protein, great option, good to have, ready to go for when you're hungry for lunch. And if you go ahead and say you buy it at the grocery on Sunday and you go ahead and pull it when you get home, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know that you're going to have food ready for yourself. So don't feel like you have to do things in a specific order in order for it to count or in order for it to happen because it doesn't have to be that way at all. Um, I don't recommend necessarily meal prepping all of your food on the weekend for Monday through Friday just because like food spoils and you don't know if you're going to want that, you know, in a few days anyways. But like having a plan for what you're going to eat and being prepared with the ingredients I think is is good enough um, future planning. So, oh yeah, I forgot about the part about doing, I was going to move on, um, do things for your future self. So um, when I have downtime, and again, this has kind of become a habit that's become a little bit or a lot more second nature than it used to be. But like, I try to think of like, what could I do now for my future self and what I want? So I try not to ever wait until I'm hungry to prep lunch. Um, I typically eat around the same time every single day, like 1230 to one o'clock. And so at like 1215, depending on what I'm going to eat, what it is that I'm eating and how much prep time it'll take, I will get up from my desk and I will go into the kitchen and I will start preparing my lunch so that I'm not like super duper hungry when it comes time to actually sit down and eat but instead I'm like preparing something in advance for my future self um the same thing goes like I said you can prep your lunch the night before if you have to leave for work in the morning and you don't want to have to um, make your lunch in the morning if you won't have time you can prep it the night before, have it in the Tupperware, have your lunchbox ready to go, doing things for your future self. Or, um, I don't know, that's all I can think of right now, sorry. But just like keeping your, obviously still living in the moment and not constantly just like being crazed about like what you need to do, but just having it in the back of your mind, like when can I do things in order to support myself and support my habits and my goals and my health that I want for my future self, I guess, is keeping myself in mind. Um, and then the final point that I wanted to talk about was that no one can do this for you except for yourself. So I know that that's like a cliche that nobody can make it happen but you. Um, but really and truly, it's so true that you have to um, you have to want it for yourself more than anything in order to make it happen. So it is good to have support, um, people around you who will encourage you and be positive towards like the habits that you are trying to work on and maybe give you a little nudge if you're struggling. But also sometimes that is harmful for some people because they feel like it's an external pressure and um, they don't want to let that person down. So um, I think it's good to make sure that you're doing it for yourself and you know you know what it is, you know what it is that you want to do and making it happen for yourself. Like I can tell you all of the education and all of the tips and all of the things in the world, but if you don't want it bad enough for yourself, then it's not going to happen because it, it really truly is difficult. It's not easy to make changes. Our habits are habits for a reason because we are set in our ways of doing the same repetition over and over. So breaking that cycle in order to get a different outcome is not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. And anybody who does it, I commend you. It's incredible. Um, and I'm so proud of you. And please know that. I, I truly mean it, that I'm so proud of you for any changes that you're able to make in order to improve your health for yourself. But that being said, like, you – you had to do it. You did it. You made it happen. And that's 
And that's the only way it can happen. You can go to a trainer, you can go to a dietitian, they can push you and they can encourage you and do all of the things, give you all of the words, say all the stuff. But, um, you know, when you go home, it's just you making these choices for yourself in the end, at the end of the day. So you have to remember that and you have to do it and you have got to make it happen because if you don't want it for yourself, nobody else can want it bad enough for you, for you to do it. And um, that's just going to have to be a change that you're going to be willing to make. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. I think that's all of the things I wanted to talk about today, that it's not easy and it's going to take reminding um, and that's okay and that's normal and set up those reminders, set yourself up for success, write it down in your planner, write it down on your calendar when you're going to start a new habit or a reminder that you're doing it and to keep, keep on moving with it. Um, have the food in your pantry. If it's not in your house, then how are you going to eat it? So make sure that you have a plan at the grocery store and what you're purchasing and what you're going to be eating for the week because you can buy the spinach, you can buy the Brazil nuts, you can buy all of the things, but if you don't have a plan for how and when you're going to eat them, it's not easy to make it happen. Um, and think about your future self when you're doing something. Like you are, you're exercising and going for the walk in the moment for how it makes you feel right now, but you're also doing it for yourself, for your for your tomorrow self that you know you moved and now you want to keep it going and um, snowballing the effects. And um, yeah, nobody can make it happen but you. And if when you do it, you're going to be really proud of yourself. And I am really proud of you just for even starting. So it's not an easy place to be and just keep up with it. And yeah, keep taking in all of the information. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave me a rating or review. I really appreciate it. The algorithm likes it to see that people who listen enjoy the episode. So that'll help me um, and the podcast on that end. And um, make sure you're following or subscribing, whether you're on YouTube or listening on the podcast. Um, it helps to ensure that you will see the episodes when they come out and they'll be easily available for you to have a reminder <laughs> to listen to them, which is always good. I would hate for you to forget about the podcast because we've got lots more to share. It's never ending. Um, we're just going to keep chugging along. And uh, last thing, if you want to share this with a friend or family member who's maybe like struggling with the motivation and wanting to make some changes themselves, um, yeah, and they could maybe benefit from it. If you think so, then thank you. And um, and welcome to any new listeners. So that being said, the ramble is over and I hope that this episode has helped you to make better bites. Have a great week.